Hello and welcome to Latter Day Profiles. I'm Brian Howard. We're here at the LDS Motion Picture Studio in Provo, Utah. And joining me today is Hal Boyd. Hal, welcome. It's good to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Hal has many titles, the editor of the Desert News, and previously the opinion editor. You might have read some of those. Also, you've been an associate professor of family law and policy at BYU. Widely published, has at least a few books, uh, Are Christians Mormon, College for the Commonwealth, Psalms of Nauvoo. You've been a guest on a lot of shows, NPR, CNN. So welcome. Thanks for taking some time to come and visit with us. Well, this is this is the only show I've wanted to be on, so I'm grateful <laughs> to get the invite. Uh, let's talk a little bit about back, your background. You say you're born in Ohio, but you grew up primarily in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Born in Cleveland, uh, about 30 minutes outside of Kirtland, and... Um, uh, grew up largely in a suburb of Boston, in between Boston and Worcester, to be precise, a little town called Northboro. Hmm. So, yeah. I know there's a good collection of members of the church there. How was it growing up uh, being a member of the church in that area? It, it was wonderful. I mean, you don't really know what you don't know, so that hmm. was just growing up uh, for me. Uh, but as I look back on it, you know, we had some remarkable opportunities and people in the stake with immense experience in the business world and academia and all sorts of different spheres of influence and. I remember we had a young men's activity that was, uh, it was sort of a, a multi-day kind of a, 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 a young men's, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, um, sort of leadership training. It was held at Harvard Business School. And so it didn't occur to me, you know, years later that uh, not everyone gets that kind of an opportunity. And they were doing this for all, you know, all sorts of kids from all sorts of different backgrounds who are members of the church. Um, from urban environments to suburban environments, from, you know, different uh, socioeconomic. And it was just a remarkable opportunity to gather together and, uh, you know, talk about spiritual things, but also talk about uh, leadership preparation, secular things. So I, I loved growing up in, in Massachusetts. I will say I've always, you know, when I was young, coming out to the West Coast, I felt drawn to the West, the open spaces, sure. the... Uh, you know, the, the big sky, uh, larger beaches uh, when you get to California. And so I, I did fall in love with the West, and I now you have adopted Utah as, as our home and, and, uh, and embraced that, embrace that identity. So although I loved growing up in Massachusetts and the East Coast and Ohio, I also I love Utah. Happy where you are right now. Uh, you know, as you're growing up, uh, what were your kind of career aspirations? What were you looking to thinking to do? Oh, I had very, I mean, I was very myopic, you know, as a, as a teen. You're just sort of thinking about uh, sports and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hopefully you could get to go out on a date, those types of things. So very, very rudimentary. I wasn't, uh, I, I don't think I was, uh, you know, as, as they said about Joseph Smith, he was a serious youth. I was probably, I was a less serious <laughs> youth. And, um, but I knew my, fa my father had uh, been an attorney. So I thought, uh, you know, that's perhaps something out there that, that I might look into eventually. Um, and, uh, and, and he, he actually, he, he, my father uh, wanted to be a journalist and worked as a journalist and then realized, you know, he couldn't really make ends meet fully as a journalist and so went into law. And, and uh, so I, you know, I sort of wanted to be a lawyer and ended up being a journalist. And so <laughs> we have different, <laughs> different uh, things that way. But, but I, you know, I sort of stumbled into journalism and he really loved it. It was a passion for him. And so that was, that was in my home. Journalism, law. My mother was a school teacher, so we we understood the value of education. Yeah, I got you. So you went to BYU, and you chose. Did you choose philosophy right off the bat? When did you choose? No, I think I I think I I chose English. Mm -hmm. uh, so I first went to we you know just I did a summer semester, mm -hmm. and I sort of the plan was I was gonna. My parents had gone to the University of Michigan, though I was born in Ohio. They're sort of transplants from sure. Michigan, and um, you know I thought that's where I was gonna go. And a friend of mine uh, persuaded me to go to a summer semester, if I'm recalling the details right, at BYU, and uh, had just an amazing summer, a fantastic summer. And after that summer, I went on my mission and uh, decided, you know, BYU is the, the place for me. And um, I can't remember how. I've started studying English and enjoyed that. You know, it's a common story that when you begin, you know, college, you sort of don't really know your major. So I think I was just feeling things out. Maybe with, had in the back of my mind, maybe I'd be going into law. English seemed like you have to know about words and write. And so that was probably probably in the back of my mind. I, I really enjoyed, had some very influential professors during my time. But I was drawn toward kind of the philosophical elements of it. Um, 
the structure of arguments, uh, logical reasoning, and and the philosophy itself. Just interesting to hear, you know, different conceptions of ideas and what authors were trying to get at with their material. And so, the, so I was drawn to that. And so I started just to take take more core philosophy classes. And then I thought, yeah, this is this is um, you know, this this speaks to me. And I, it was it was a wonderful education. I loved my professors at BYU, both in the philosophy department, but I, I really enjoyed you know the core courses. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I enjoyed taking biology. You know, it was I got to encounter my biology professor, uh, you know, in in another setting recently, and I went up to him. I said, you know, I I want to tell you, I was in a hundred person survey course, and I loved. Your, your class. And we, we read these best science essays in the class. And so I just fell in love with my BYU experience, both in the philosophy department, but more broadly, you know, my religion professors, my general yeah. professors, and, and tried to, to drink deeply uh, while I was here. I, I graduated in a little bit lo longer time frame than it took my wife to graduate with her master's in accounting. <laughs> so I wasn't as efficient, but I really, really enjoyed my time. Uh, at BYU. Hmm. So, did you meet your wife at BYU? Yeah, so we we met just outside of the Marriott Center. Uh, I sort of, you know, joked I was looking for uh, an accountant so I could no, not have to do my taxes. Uh, but she, we we fell in love and have been married. Let's see, fifteen years. So, well, what's the timetable? So you ended up going to Yale for law school. Uh, yeah. you graduated. Was that right away, or did you have some time in between? Uh, so, so r right as I was graduating, I, the plan was actually to go to the Midwest because that's where my family was at the sure. time. My, my in-laws were, were actually in Ohio as well. And, and my, uh, my mother, again, she's a native of Michigan and she had kind of moved back there. So the plan was to sort of end up in the Midwest and we had picked a school at uh, University of Chicago and kind of picked out housing and, and just a very strong kind of spiritual Mm -hmm. uh, prompting to go in a different direction led led me to uh, working at the Deseret News. So that's what uh -huh. I did directly out of uh, out of school. So. And, and how did that come about? It's like a different direction, but it wasn't your what you had in mind. Yeah, least. certainly wasn't in mind. Again, I don't think you know you learn you learn about yourself um, over time. I think that and you learn about your spiritual gifts. You learn about uh, maybe your predilections, interests, and I certainly learned about myself through that process. I think I was. You know, I'll go to law school, maybe practice corporate law. In retrospect, I don't think I would be a very corporate, a good corporate attorney, and I uh, have a lot of respect for those who are good corporate attorneys. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so so kind of in that process, I think I was headed that direction with the, in the headed to the University of Chicago. I thought, you know, that's probably what I would do, um, and just I think. Uh, you know, in, in my belief, I think the Lord sort of saved me from myself and moved me in a direction where, where I needed to be. That doesn't always happen, but in my case, that, that, that occurred, uh, at least uh, I, I feel that way, yeah. So how long were you there at the Desert News before you went so on? So it was a short stint uh, at the Desert News. It started out as an internship, and then because and then, uh, I was a little hesitant that, you know, giving up going to this yeah. law school, and so we are sort of conflicted that way. But after just a, a couple weeks, uh, it became a full-time role. And then I ended up working uh, for the church um, in what was then the public relations oh, yeah. department. Um, and so I had some wonderful experiences there. And then subsequent to that, I ended up going to law school. Yeah. And how did you choose that? I mean, that's an Ivy League school. It's like, did you have aspirations for that? How did that choice come about? Yeah, well, I had a little bit more experience under my belt. Some f family situations had, had changed. I wasn't as concerned about being in the Midwest. So mm -hmm. I kind of looked at a uh, full purview of schools from you know, the schools out east uh, and, and schools out west and schools here in, mm. in Utah. And so I did a little bit, I had a little bit more time to kind of digest that. And uh, there were familiar reasons, spiritual reasons why yeah. I thought it was important to, to go to Yale. Uh, I think if I were just following my own carnal heart, I would have ended up in somewhere sunny <laughs> and, uh, and warm, but, but that was not, that, that wasn't the cards. And I loved my experience at Yale. I thought it was uh, it's certainly for me that was the right place. You ended up uh, doing. You've done lots of things. You ended up uh, associate professor of family law at BYU. I'm not sure I got the right sequence of things. But after you finished with law school, where did you go after that? Uh, so I worked in a university administration. I went down to a university in uh, Eastern Kentucky oh, University, Eastern Kentucky. Okay. and then sure. I got uh, kind of brought back into journalism. I was the opinion editor at the Deseret News, and that's kind of where uh, <clears throat> you know I. I've been, you know, several stints uh, at the Deseret News, and mm -hmm. even when I was at 
uh, even when I was at Yale, I would do, you know write columns and and do things. So I feel like I've always had some touch point with uh, with the Deseret News. I feel like I've always had some touch point with BYU. Mm-hmm. So uh, both institutions I care care immensely about and and value. But yeah, so so ended up being the opinion editor um, at the Deseret News, and what that entails is essentially you. Back then, we were primarily a, a, paper. a daily paper, and so um, you used to have something called uh, the editorial page in papers where the, the editors of the paper would sort of form opinions on issues of the day, either locally or nationally or internationally, and you would write that in the daily paper. You would have an opinion that represented the views of the editors every single day. So as opinion editor or as the editorial page editor, my, my responsibility to write that opinion um, on a daily basis. Sometimes we'd have two opinions. We'd want to mm-hmm. opine on two things. And then you'd also curate what was called the op-ed p- oh, page, yeah. and that just meant opposite the editorial page. So you had the editorial, and then opposite the editorial page was your op-eds. And those are typically external contributors or columnists, uh, 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 contributing writers who were external to the publication, but uh, whose voices we thought were important for our readers. And so it, um, you know, it was an extension in many ways of the things you do in law school, the things you do in a philosophy degree of thinking about arguments, um, trying to make them persuasive, trying to make them reasoned, trying to um, elevate discourse in a way so people can be informed and make good decisions about their lives, make good decisions in the political sphere. Um, and so I uh, really enjoyed that that experience. It's certainly a frenetic uh, industry. You're, you're in, in the uh, communications arena and in the journalism arena, in a way, and so you have a taste of, taste of that. But um, but it, it was a certainly a, not something I expected. Certain didn't seek out, but uh, felt like it was an important step in my life and and something I, I valued, an experience I valued yeah. for for sure. How, uh, how do you feel about writing? What's your, what's your relationship with the writing I, process? I, I don't. You know, I just watched. <laughs> I I was flying out to Washington D.C. So one of the products we have now is Deseret Magazine. Yeah. And uh, we think of it as sort of a monthly. It's a ten times a year, which is a publication schedule akin to the Atlantic and uh, the Atlantic Monthly, which is a, another sort of national magazine. And we held it, we had an event out in D.C. in conjunction with the Wheatley Institute at BYU and the National Cathedral um, and uh, the Wellesley uh, uh, Theological uh, Institute or Seminary. And so uh, we sort of came together and curated this conversation about uh, uh, Governor Cox uh, Disagree Better campaign, and they had Governor Wes Moore, and so sort of dealing with polarization, how to, you know, maybe have strongly held views, but to engage in a, in a manner that's civil, in a manner that respects the other person's opinion. Doesn't necessarily mean one's going to compromise, but at least you can have the conversation yeah. and we don't head to a maybe a, a darker place uh, uh, in terms of uh, a discourse. And so it was a really, really wonderful event in this gorgeous venue of the National Cathedral. And so anyways, on this trip, uh, it was in relation to the magazine and all of this, I, d- I thought I was you know, looking at the, the different movies on Delta that they had on offering, and one of them was on Tom Wolfe, who's a great uh, uh, writer, r- renowned writer, kind of a a personality, over-the-top personality. He would wear these white suits in Manhattan, and he was a he was from the South. He also uh, went to Yale, but he was a a, a writer with of of some um, acclaim. And uh, in the course of his his story, you know, it makes you reflect on sort of this the state of journalism and um, you know what's what's happening in the industry and what can be improved and. Um, it's made me reflect on, you know, some some of the words that but he was he was a great great writer. But they also interviewed some people in this documentary that was on this Delta flight about, uh, you know, maybe some of the more controversial things that he engaged in, some of the the people who had been burned mm-hmm. and whatnot. And um, uh, it made me reflect on a, a talk that I recalled from Elder Maxwell at BYU, and you can go look this up. I think it's Lessons from My Life, something like that. Mm. And he talks a little bit about his experience with journalism. So he ran a program, I believe for KUER, if, if mm. I'm remembering correctly, where he did interviews, interviews of individuals. And he said, 
there's so much we can learn through walking in the garden of the lives of great individuals. And he said there's so much we can learn from walking through the, their garden rather than driving a Mack truck mm. uh, uh, through that <laughs> garden. And, you know, the garden's the same, right? Uh, uh, but, you know, the way we, we go into it, um, the way we go into it can be like a Mack truck or it can be, it can be as one walking and observing and appreciating. And so it, it's, it's made me reflect on, you know, where we are uh, in, in, in journalism uh, through my own sort of career, um, but, but also, you know, I think um, in this moment, how important it is, uh, you know, that we, we exemplify civility, we exemplify um, truth and light and seeking to provide context, providing facts, yes, but what, what do those facts mean? How are they connected? And so this, this recent trip, going out into D.C., have, hearing that conversation, mm-hmm. reflecting on the words of Elder Maxwell and sort of my own career with my own relationship with journalism, it's made me a little bit, um, I, I, it's made me hopeful that we, you know, we can improve things uh, when, you know, we can dedica- dedicate ourselves to the better angels of the craft and, yeah. uh, and, and do a good job as, as, as you do on this program. Yeah, we try. Right? <laughs> so, so as an editor of the, the Desert News, and then also you're a part of the Wheatley Institute, which is really concerned about family, government, and religion. Um, you know, what, what do you see as the role, like the Desert News or journalism in general, of trying to make those things work together? Because right now it seems like obviously there's a lot of really divisive stuff, both in journalistically and, and what's going on. Uh, what do you see as the role that uh, journalism and the Deseret News in particular can do? To yeah, so when the that? Deseret News was founded, there's this, this uh, pretty remarkable uh, little scrap of history that, uh, you know, for the few people who are interested in the history of the Deseret News, you know, uh, uh, probably read about. But uh, you know, Brigham Young, when he's uh, when they're preparing the saints to go out west, uh, they they write up this memo, and the memo is giving uh, is, is to be given to, if I remember, W. W. Phelps to go out east and acquire a printing press that they could take across the plains, and this was gonna this memo was gonna aid, uh, if 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 I'm recalling correctly, W. W. Phelps in obtaining it to say to get the saints to rally in the East Coast to help them obtain a printing press. And so he said, um, in, the, in the passage, they, they write this out and says, it's important uh, to have this press so our children can have books and that the saints can have new things to feast the soul, which I thought was a beautiful passage. Um, and so they took this press and they lugged this press across the United States to bring it to the valley so that their children could have education, their children could learn, mm. and so the saints could have new things to feast the soul. And so, um, you know, the, the Deseret News, when it started, 1850, um, it, it started with the motto of, of truth and liberty. And that was something that the saints cared deeply about. They cared about truth, and truth with a capital T. And so when you talk about these, these things such as faith, religious freedom, family, civility, uh, uh, community, uh, these, are, these are core truths that are important to our souls individually and collectively. And so at the Deseret News, we want to champion those uh, because we care about truth. And we don't suspend and say, well, we, we have no opinion about the truth. No, as an institution, we know the fount from which truth derives. And one of my colleagues, uh, Doug Wilkes, who's been the editor and, and the executive editor, he talks about, you know, we're not afraid to say we understand that Christ, uh, Christ is the fount of truth. Mm-hmm. And, and that flows. And so when it comes to issues of family, we want to be one of the best in the nation covering issues related to the family, whether that's family policy or best practices in the family or family formation, um, ways to help families succeed in their everyday life. Uh, when it comes to issues around faith and faith in the public square and preserving core institutions, religious institutions, and helping individuals flourish uh, through uh, faith in God and responsibility to God, uh, that we want to be, we want to be 
you know, a, a part, we want to be on par with any other publication in terms of covering that and covering religious freedom uh, types of issues, human dignity. And then uh, with regard to issues around civility, you know, the prophet's words to um, be peacemakers. You know, uh, President Oaks's uh, charge um, in terms of the Constitution and mm -hmm. on contested issues seeking to moderate and unify. So we want to be involved in that cause and we want to exemplify that cause. And, <clears throat> of course, we're, we're, we're also, you know, reporting the news, right? right. Yeah. And so um, we report in those categories, but some things are just, uh, as they say, all that's fit to print is the, is the New York Times uh, a phrase. And we think about, you know, what's, what is interesting to our readers? We want to cultivate an audience. We want to help elevate our readers. We want them to come to a space where they're learning something they're understanding something that improves their lives, helps them navigate their lives. So that's what we're all about. The Wheatley Institution has been, uh, Wheatley Institute has been a remarkable partner uh, in that regard and is doing some incredible things in terms of research, curating important speakers, um, uh, uh, helping students um, have a, a, a better understanding of the importance of these arenas. So we, we think of ourselves as equally yoked with many of our partners from BYU, BYU-Idaho, um, in some of those core core causes, and we also understand our responsibility as as reporters, as journalists, to uh, document the news and to uh, have a watchdog role in those important uh, essential functions yeah. of journalism as well. Yeah. Now, someone does a search and they look for stuff written by you. You're a prolific writer. You've got lots of stuff out there. But one that I want to talk about in the last couple of minutes of the book are. Christians Mormon. What was the impetus for that book? Yeah. And it's been interesting as I've been reading through it. Well, I love to pay tribute to, you know, um, now I write, you know, typically I'm more writing shorter form uh, magazine or newspaper stories or uh, opinion articles, but uh, but a, a couple of book projects, that was certainly a fun one. And it allows me to pay a little bit of tribute to an old professor of mine, mentor, um, and uh, just a saint. In, in all senses of, of the word, uh, David Paulson, Dr. David Paulson, who's passed. And uh, he was, he was a, a, a University of Chicago trained attorney uh, who practiced law, then uh, went on and got a PhD from the University of Michigan and, uh, and, and dedicated his life to studying theology uh, with, a, with a particular interest in the doctrines and teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he was inspired by a little project that Truman Madsen, another philosophy professor at BYU years ago, who, um, and also one of the formative minds behind the Wheatley Institute, I should mm -hmm. mention. But Truman Madsen uh, was, in, was, was started to document uh, <clears throat> the idea that there are some religious uh, traditions uh, that had at one time sort of denounced the teachings and doctrines of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the early teachings and doctrines, as heretical, as non-Christian. But then uh, sort of over the years, uh, those theological traditions, um, many, many individuals within those theological traditions start to adopt ideas mm -hmm. and teachings and doctrines um, that were sort of once revelatory or, or once uh, denounced uh, that had been kind of revealed by Joseph Smith. And so we decided, uh, and I, the real credit goes to Dr. Paulson, uh, to do a real thorough investigation of this. And he rounded up many students who worked on this project over years. Uh, I was privileged enough to be a uh, co-author and I think uh, help sort of lead the, the project to its, its completion. But really, he deserves the credit in Truman Madsen. What we did was we looked at pretty systematically over the, the past century and plus uh, moves along uh, by mainline Christian thinkers and others toward once viewed as heretical theological positions. So the idea of uh, a theosis, which we encounter in the New Testament, the idea that um, uh, man through the, 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 the grace and atonement of Jesus Christ can become like uh, even unto uh, our Heavenly Father um, through, through our progress and through, through his power. And uh, uh, that is, that, uh, that's probably one of the most powerful chapters in seeing you know, sort of that teaching once just roundly denounced as, you know, as something heretical. And, and through decades and decades and decades, you see even now conferences on Calvin or on Martin Luther, the great uh, reformers, um, saying, no, they, 
they they not only believed this, they taught it, hmm. and they taught it in pretty profound ways. And you see it in in, a, in many other faith traditions and whole conferences dedicated to this. And so uh, we go through that. We go through you know doctrines such as uh, the belief that marriage is eternal. Uh, many of these sorts of teachings, um, and uh, and just sort of document those those doctrinal shifts and. And again, he, you know, an incredible mind. I'd highly recommend all of Dr. Paulson's work. His work on Joseph Smith and the Problem of Evil is, is pretty significant work. He gave a BYU speech on that that mm. I, I can't recommend highly enough. And mm. so, yeah, that was that, that project, and I was just grateful to be a part of it, play mm. a role there. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. Highly recommend. Do a search. Uh, Hal's got some great stuff out there, both uh, on all levels of, of things, both the short articles and the books. But a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks, Hal, for coming. And taking Thank you time. so much for having me. Appreciate yeah. it.